Remember, when a visual tool like QFD analysis is described to you verbally, sometimes the best thing you can do is just go ahead and draw it. That's exactly what's going on with this particular problem. Let's take a look. In a certain QFD analysis, a very strong positive correlation was found between customer value feature A and technical specification 1. I think I'm going to need that info. While a very strong negative correlation was found between customer value feature B and technical specification 2. Technical specification 1 and technical specification 2 were also found to be um, strongly positively correlated with each other, but there were no other significant correlations detected in this analysis. This analysis suggests that if technical specification 1 were deliberately increased in the design of the product being studied, how much, how would customer opinion of the value features change? Okay, now. It's funny, it was talking all about correlation because that's the basis of QFD analysis and this was strongly correlated and that was strongly correlated and I was underlying just those labels. Customer value feature A, customer value feature B, technical specifications 1 and 2. Why? Because I need to set up the diagram. It's talking about the house of quality, the QFD diagram. And the best way to address the question concerning a change in the product design is to set that diagram back up. I needed that information about how many value features and how many technical specifications to first draw the basic grid of the analysis. Because the customer value features are the rows in a QFD diagram, right? So I would have one row for customer value feature A and one row for customer value feature B. And then wait a minute, technical specifications, those are the columns in the relationship matrix. There was two, so I need two columns, one for, let's see, technical specification one, let's put it here, tech spec one, and let's put this one here, tech spec two, and wait a minute, why is it called the house of quality? I, right now I just have a 4x4 four four grid. Yes, that's the relationship matrix right in there. But to finish just the outline of the diagram, we need to add the roof on the house of quality. Looks like I'm going to track over my printing a little bit right in here because that's important. That stores correlations also. So in our case, there's just a little diamond shape to finish out the roof of the house of quality, so to speak. In a QFD diagram, there's usually an eccentric column to the left of the, why don't I kind of punch it a little bit, relationship matrix, to store any weights between the two value features. Okay, but in this case, uh, I'm recalling what it said in that paragraph. Let me slide the paragraph over a little bit. It, it didn't mention um, whether any one of these features was more important than the other. I don't think, right? What it did mention, though, is that there were some correlations in between. Oh, right, because we're still finishing the diagram. The diagram indicates what's correlated with what. Uh, now that means that we do need to set up some sort of symbol for a positively correlated, a negatively correlated, um, to uh, mimic the symbols that are used in the book. I mean, as long as you define your symbols, virtually any symbols are okay, virtually. Um, but let me think, how about, we'll take green for positively correlated. Let's say that a solid green dot will be a strong positive correlation. Now, 
Why did I want to define that in particular? Because who was it? Oh, a very strong positive correlation was found between customer value feature A, that's this row, and technical specification 1. That's how we illustrate that statement, by putting that symbol there. While a very strong negative correlation was found between, okay, wait a minute, I need a different symbol. Uh, how about we use red, uh, boxed, x, strong, negative, correlation. Strong negative correlation between customer value feature B and technical specification 2. So that means it goes right there between these two, strong negative correlation. Technical specification 1 and technical specification 2 were found to be, oh wait a minute, strongly positively correlated again, right? Okay, that symbol. Now wait a minute, it's the two specifications. That's what that diamond in the roof of the house of quality was for, was to store any relationship between these two things here. So, at this point, since they didn't give us any more information about it, at this point, this diagram, I keep saying that it's key to answering this question, is finished. The only thing that I have done is I have just repeated the information that was given to us in a visual fashion. All right, now, wait a minute, it was a question, right? What's the answer to the question? The analysis suggests that if tech were increased, uh, were deliberately increased in the design of the product being studied, right? Okay, if technical specification one were increased, that would be this right here. How would customer opinion of the value features change? Oh, all right. How do we use one of these diagrams? Now, they're talking about increasing this right here. So I am concerned about the relationship between that specification, if it's increased, what would happen to the customer's opinion, right, which is the rows, you'll notice that there's only one strong correlation between that specification in particular, uh, and uh, that's with uh, customer value feature A, and it's strongly positively correlated. So, strongly positively correlated. If we increase technical specification one, that will increase, the suggestion is, that will increase customer value feature one. If they dial up technical specification one, the customer's opinion of feature A will increase. Oh, all right, so we should note that. Let's see. Value feature A, right? should increase increase due to I'm going to say direct correlation with the specification Now, why did I bother to say direct correlation? Actually, because our answer is not quite finished. One thing about this question is it's true. All right, the tech specification is positively correlated with that feature, so when it goes up, so will that feature. But remember the, the gable, the pointy roof in the house of quality? We were indicating that there's a strong positive correlation between the two technical specifications. Okay, so well, what's that even look like in real life? It means that if you dial up that one specification, the other specification tends to increase as well, right? Like it's, you know, it's difficult to make a screen taller without also increasing its area. Oh, all right, so if they increase technical specification one, we can expect an increase to technical specification two due to the strong positive correlation. Now you might be saying, yeah, but they didn't ask what would happen to the other technical specification. They asked what would happen to the customer's opinion of the value features. True, but I'm looking and technical specification two is, has a strong negative correlation with the other value feature. So, if they increase technical specification one, we can expect the technical specification two will inflate 
which means that we can expect that the customer opinion of value feature B may be driven down. Oh, all right, and we had better actually include that in our observations. Let's see, so value feature B, feature, that's supposed to be a U, may decrease. The customer opinion of value feature 2 may decrease because, there's an S in because, tech spec 1 is positively correlated with tech spec 2 oops spec 2 which is negatively correlated with B so in the full analysis if you increase tech spec 1, value feature A should increase, A, value feature B, uh-oh, may decrease.